Hey everybody, Obey the Papaya back at you again with another YouTube video. So today we got early access patch version 0.17. So this is a really quick uh, summary of the nerfs and buffs. Uh, we got a lot of straight up nerfs and buffs, not much any neutral, nothing that was like, oh, they did something here, they did something here. Just pretty much uh, either they buffed them or they nerfed them, uh, except for uh, Grux. So a little bit interesting uh, of a patch, nothing necessarily too huge. Um, but we'll, we'll get into it as we go further in the video, just a little quick snippet. So version 0 0.17, this is coming Thursday, April 11th, um, and we are getting Grim. Grim EXC is on his way. Um, so just talking about how they're going to uh, version 0 0.17 isn't as big as other updates, which is true. It's not that it's not that big. Um, but it helps the back end and they're going to get bigger updates coming in soon. So we're not getting any item extra item patch. Uh, item number six is not coming in this patch. Just a new hero. So a new hero appears. Engage kill mode with Grim EXC. So we finally got Grim back. Uh, relatively basic uh, carry, but I think it's going to change the meta pretty, pretty hard, pretty aggressively. So it's passive. Uh, so this actually fit the data mine pretty well overall. Uh, not necessarily too much information in the data mine, but in terms of the skills and abilities. So we got Pulse Fire passive. Basically, all basic attacks will now deal are modified to deal magical damage. Grim EXE basic attacks and abilities apply Pulse Fire uh, to enemy targets hit for 4 seconds. The next basic attack or ability will burst the Pulse Fire for 10 plus 20% total physical plus 20 magical power. Uh, bonus true damage on hit. So this is going to be true damage. Now remember... With uh, magic damage right here, everything's being converted to magic damage. The only pen item you're really going to get, right? Like basically a raw percent pen is going to be Caustica. Demolisher and, you know, that's not going to work out. So Demo being one of the most overpowered items right now for carries cannot be built on him. So this is going to be interesting to see. Are we going to build a Caustica third item on this character when his entire kit, which you'll see, provides a lot of mana? So basic attack damage does scale off of bonus physical power, right? So you need to build physical power if you want to increase this basic attack damage to so make him a carry, right? You need to build uh, physical power, right? You can't build magic power and expect uh, your uh, your basics to go up. Magic power is only going to affect the actual spells. Uh, so the first ability, the primary for PC, this is Q. I'm not so sure on PlayStation and Xbox. I should learn the control scheme so I can let people know. But... We got Displacement Blast. Displacement Blast is basically just a ball that you shoot. And there's an extra mode, which you'll find out later, which is Secondary Button. That's E Button. So the Secondary Skill, which is the E Button for PC, you can enter Sentry Mode or Assault Mode. Sen assault Mode basically makes what you saw turn into a lob. So right here, it's going to have a little bit of a, a crescent drop, and it'll push people away, kind of like... Uh, Similar to a Howie Bop, but they stay on the ground. Um, so, so right here we can see that there's physical scaling and magic power scaling. Magic power scaling being increased, right? Magic power is easier to go up. It, let's let's simplify this. To get maximum, so the max the maximum bonus uh, physical power that you could have is around 220 physical power. It's around there, give or take, about 220, right? For most, for most carries. You can have some bonuses by like really, you know, getting things that scale you up, but it's about 220. For magic power, you can get up to 450, even 500 magic power if you go for straight up raw magic power uh, builds, right? So think about that for when it comes to scaling. Um, physical, bonus physical power is going to help you with your basic attack damage too though. So if you want to play them as an ADC, you want to prioritize and take a look at what the percentage scaling of your physical power is to your abilities. So here you got them pretty close, a little bit more on the magic power. Um, and it's pretty, pretty good damage numbers overall. Um, and then you got the displacement. Uh, and then you can hear as you can get into the sentry slash assault mode. Sentry mode, the more passive mode. Basic attacks will restore 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 mana. That's pretty good mana regen on basics. Uh, assault mode. Um, pulse cannon shots cost 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 mana. Which will deal 15% total physical or 20% magical power. So this is when this stuff is going to get pretty interesting. You could take the magical power build. You'll then increase your basic attack damage in a way, but not directly. Uh, but this is going to apply bonus magical damage on hit. And it'll apply a 10, 12, 20% decaying slow. That's actually pretty nuts and pretty crazy. 
Um, and it's on hit damage and the skill is pretty well magic power. I, it's a, it seems like a pretty good skill, uh, you know, in, in terms of, uh, I don't think we necessarily, we had, I don't think we had a stance change on the original character, but this is, a. Uh, this is going to be pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, next on the list is the RMB ability, Deflector Shield. Um, this is just going to be a shield. It's going to basically be a cleanse. So if someone uses a CC, you could press it and it's going to, it's going to cancel. It's going to be similar to a Chimera, uh, E. And there's a cleanse timer. Um, will we see the cleanse timer here? Oh, one second. So one second timer. It's monster. It's actually going to be huge for a carry. Richter, you're not going to have a chance with this guy, right? So it, this guy's going to be pretty, pretty insane overall. He's going to be able to block some damage and to engages. He's going to be very, very good, I think. Um, alrighty. And if he, if he, if the shield successfully blocks the ability, Grim restores uh, 20 up to 40% of his missing mana, which is absolutely insane, actually. Um, his ultimate, this is a global, uh, I actually don't truly know if this is a global ultimate. Grim AXC slows himself by 60% and locks onto an enemy hero. You do need to have vision of the hero. Um, gyro targeted force orb is launched. The orb will pass through the world and non-hero units but can be blocked by enemy heroes. So this will go through terrain but you need to see the person in order to shoot it. And I think it's global. I think as long as you have vision of them, you can shoot this as far as it, as it can go, I believe. Uh, there's nothing that talks about range. I mean, it, the scaling is insane. We're talking about like 250, 450, 650, then 120% on your bonus physical or 90% on your magic power. This on top of Oblivion Crown, like if you hit a basic or a skill and now you're applying bonus uh, damage taken, then you have Wraith Leggings. I mean, if you go the magic power build on this guy, you're looking at doing like a, a 1500 damage ult even. So it's it's pretty, you know, it's pretty absurd. You can reach those type of numbers. It's not like an RG Sauce's video where he was basically one hitting people every 10 seconds. But I mean, it's it's going to be really solid damage to take out that one carry, to take out that one person running away, uh, you know, and his entire kit is relatively safe, outputs a ton of damage, on hit, true damage, doesn't necessarily have an escape, but I mean, the knockback and the shield is pretty huge, it's pretty huge. This guy's going to be pretty interesting, uh, I think it's going to be super fun to see what this guy's going to bring to the table. Uh, store news. So we got new skins. These are original skins from from the devs, I believe. We got Wraith Shogun. Looks pretty interesting. And we got Countess uh, Shogun. Uh, look pretty cool. You know, uh, hopefully uh, I want to see him in the game. I'm not going to judge him on a picture. Uh, so we'll see him in game. We got Quang Silver Ghost. Looks simple. Uh, Grim EXC's Hot Rod. Simple uncommon or common skin. So relatively cheap. And we got the Shogun Wraith bundle, which you can see here. And then we got the Shogun Countess build, you can see here, a bundle. And then you got the hot, uh, the Grim bundle as well, but that just comes with the skin. They're not, there's no spray, unfortunately. So per hero cast options are coming. We are pleased to share new customization settings for each hero, meaning you can now set unique cast options between default, normal, quick, and on a per hero basis. This is going to be huge. These settings are persistent, remembered in game, but can only currently be changed while you're playing that hero. So you can only do this while you're playing that hero. That's actually really nice still. Uh, I'm excited to go in and change every character that I play. But I want to change that. Um, controller cast option changes. So controller is getting some changes. We've changed the default setting for casting on controller from quick to normal setting. But what exactly is normal in today's society? Nice. Uh, default, same as normal, but with a few tweaks that match the default options. Um, used by keyboard and mouse players on PC. Normal, press to show targeting indicators to click confirmation. Quick, hold to show targeting indicators, release to confirm. Instant, skips targeting animations and immediately confirms on press. Uh, you can catch these settings at any time, change these settings at any time in the setting menu. Uh, gameplay balances, cleanse CC immunity window. So a lot of the cleanses, we're actually getting a nice buff. This is going to be pretty big. I like this. Uh, cleanse CC immunity is increased from 0.25 to 0.35. The amount of times you might have missed your seat, your anti, your cleanse or whatnot, and it got hit by something, it's it's gonna give you a little bit of more leeway. That's very nice. So I like to see that. Hero balance changes. So here on Argus, uh, we're getting health is decreased by 15 HP. Not bad. Uh, I mean, it's something. Uh, he is a bit on the tankier side, I'd say. Uh, Dread Nova primary. That's the the stun. His Q. Um, damage decreased. Uh, pretty nice into. Uh, into early game in general getting a 10 decrease 
uh, mana cost is increased, which is very nice. A, a straight 80 is solid. I think that's how it should be. And in reality, I would say it should go 80 to 100 because it's uh, his, his, his kit, in my opinion, still doesn't require that much mana. Um, his ultimate magical power scaling decreased from 30 to 25. This is actually a very nice sizable buff. I still think a 20% would be nice with the three, the three balls and the slow and how big of a range it is. But it's something and it's something that I like to see. Not seeing, I don't see this changing his, how strong he is as a support though. He's still a phenomenal support in my opinion, especially with the time warp build. But we will see later below the time warp change. Uh, Drongo. Uh, damage decreased from 200 to 185 and basically comes back into late game. Um, you know, he does output a ton of damage. And it's nice to see the ultimate damage come down. But I think it just uh, provides so much utility with this kit. It's something that's nice, but he just he, he provides so much utility with this kit. So it's not something I personally would like to see. Um, Gideon. So Black Hole Ultimate. Quality of Life. Now commits its cooldown and activates its effects immediately when used. So I like this change, but I also dislike it. Why? Because there's still so many people with ultimates that... That don't go on cooldown when you stun them. Fang Mao being one of the best examples. Belica, one of the best examples. So I'm still disappointed that, yes, we're getting one character change, but I don't think that means we're going to change every other character that deserves it. So it's nice in a way, but it's also kind of disappointing, you know? Um, resolves interactions such as True Silver, Bracelet, Shield, not activating instantly when players use ability. So it will help a situation. That's actually, that's something that will probably actually help. Uh, and that's what I was wondering was true silver you use it true silver won't proc yet until the it's used or it commits right it's actually effective or it activates so this will technically help most people when they do build true silver bracelet it's not going to help the people that got stuck there got hit by cc and are pressing it again and they got a nice ult off of it you know it's gonna so it's gonna benefit true silvers so I do I do like it it's not that I dislike it but I would like to see more of the the cooldown commence, you know, immediately when it's canceled. Belica, Fang Mao being prime examples. Uh, Grux's ability to run. So now we got Grux. We're getting Grux nerf health decrease from 640 to 630. It's going to help uh, punish him into late game. Uh, Bloodlust passive. Damage decreased from 5 to 3. You're still getting the plus 3 per level. So that's pretty nice. I think Bloodlust passive is the is that the damage on the on the the blood uh the bleed so no it's, it's going to be nice it's going to prevent that level of, that early in early on damage um that he did have and i think it was very punishable um smash and grab primary his cooldown is being decreased drastically though which in my opinion is a huge buff so primary being his q that's his pull and dang four seconds that's a huge deal. So this guy is going to be... He might actually be more scarier when it comes to team fights. So, you know, we'll see. He might be more scary when it comes to lading too. Now he's going to have four seconds, you know, back on. It. That's, that's by the time Minion Wave comes in. So, you know, this is... this is I think this is a buff. Iggy and Scorch. Magical power scaling increased on his RMB. That's a Molotov. So a small little bump there. It's nice. I still don't think that's really where, where his kit is, I think. An alt change would really help him out. But, you know, we'll see. It's technically a buff. Kuang. So Kuang is getting physical armor is decreased. Remember, physical armor scales um, not linearly. So this is a big... Like, you're going to see a bigger change off of this. So, um, you know, uh, this is this is going to be a sizable change. And I think it will be noticed. And the growth also being lowered too is going to be nice for early game. Because he's, he's a tanky he's a tanky guy. And then his alternate ability, that's his RMB, his AoE uh, damage with a shield. We're getting the health scaling dropped by a percent, which is very nice, actually. Uh, th that is very, very good, especially into late game. Um, percent scaling, you know, it's huge. Bellica, so we're getting a little bit of a Bellica nerf. Uh, attack speed decreased from 130 to 125, which I've been playing her recently. And I've been wondering why her attack speed is just faster. It feels faster. So I, I do think that it did need a nerf, and this will help out a lot with with uh with her farming in lane. Um, Void bomb damage is decreased. It's for late game though, unfortunately. I still would like to see a change on. I mean, a change in her ultimate in reality, but I think she should have one more second uh, CD increase, honestly. 
uh, ultimate magic power scaling decrease from 65 to 60, which is good. I'll take, uh, you know, any any less damage on a click on, uh, I'll be happy with, especially with how simple her kit is. Uh, Muriel uh, consecrated ground, her secondary, that's basically her shield that she throws down, but the one that's a, more of a bubble. Shield is increased by 10, and it scales until late game, but just by 10, just a little bit level, uh, level 1, which is... Nice. I mean, it's going to help a little bit with engages. That's going to save you some dot damage. You know, it's going to save you by one basic attack from minions. It's, it's good. It's worthwhile. Revenant. Revenant's getting some love. Movement speed increased from 650 to 655. So a small little movement speed increase, but hey, it, it, you know, anything helps. And physical power growth is increased from 2.4 to 3. Now, I am truly curious how much of a difference that's going to be. Because I assume that means 650 units per second or something like that, or, you know, so I'm curious how much that's really going to help. I wonder if it's noticeable. It is in a way noticeable when you play like Grux though. Grux is far faster being the fastest uh, person in the game than, than a carry. So 655, like a, a 5 might help out. We'll see. We'll see. Item balance changes. So Obelisk and Time Flux Band are getting the magic pen reduced uh, by 2. Unfortunate. They hate mid laners. I don't know why they're doing this. It kind of upsets me. But I don't. I just don't understand. Um, so that's getting nerfed. Raymond of Renewal, Regenerator damage regenerated decreased from 10 to 8%. So a little bit of a nerf there. Uh, let's see. It provided too much durability, especially when rushed. By reducing the regeneration it offers, wheelers will have to think twice about their positioning as regen is now more susceptible to being burst through. Okay, so it's just going to... A little bit of a... You know, it's a what? It is, it is a 20% nerf, so... Time Warp. So Time Warp is getting base mana regen decreased from 150 to 125. It's going to be, it seems like it'll be relatively noticeable, but I don't know. It's kind of still a little small. It's like, what, a sixth of a change? It's not necessarily too crazy, but, um, you know, it is a very, it is a strong item for support for support players like Argus to build. Uh, bug fixes. So we got fix the bug where Morgish would not correctly heal when using her swarm on a close range target. Fix the bug where Kwong would fall under or prime pit ledges when using his ultimate. Fix the bug where Grux's warlord skins. Channel tra trail VFX could sometimes play incorrectly. Fix the bug where Fang Mel's earth shatter SFX. This was actually pretty annoying because I would try to listen to his ultimate and then all of a sudden I'm getting hit by it without hearing the SFX. It was really frustrating. Fix the bug where Fang Mao's stun animation could fail to play. Okay, I think I witnessed that too. Uh, fix the bug where players could become soft locked if they left the fa This is huge. Getting uh, pulled by or like getting pushed off and now you're just stuck inside of uh, a crest screen activation. I don't know why they made, they made it so big and pronounced. They should have just made it simple. Buy this item first in the store. That's it. Fix the bug that caused ability inputs to become unresponsive after canceling abilities that are a quick cast on controller. This I know is a big deal for a lot of controller players, so I'm glad that's uh, that's being fixed for y'all. Um, so that's what we're getting in terms of uh, our overall patch. I mean, it's it's a small patch. It's nothing that I would be like super. I'm super excited for. I was hoping for the six item patch. I do think that the nice change here was um, not the store news. Um, the per hero cast options is very nice and useful. So that's going to help me out. It's going to change how, how I use a lot of my characters. So overall, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a fair patch. Um, I still want to kind of, you know, we're getting ranked soon. If that comes out, it seems like we're, this patch is also delayed. We're getting it Thursday. They probably tried to get something else out, but they couldn't do it. So they delayed the patch by two days. So that way they can, you know, and it, that way they can fix whatever they were going to add in and just add in this and for this stuff that we're getting right now. But, uh, but yeah, you know, the meta necessarily hasn't changed. The little bit of CC change is only going to help people like carries and all, you know, off laners as a mid player. We don't get any, any cleanse, unfortunately. So we'll see how that goes. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think of this patch. If you guys are excited for it, uh, how you guys are enjoying predecessor, what you'd like to see, um, I like to know if you are enjoying Pred. What is your state in the game? Are you like, yes, this game is solid. And I don't, I'm not talking about, oh, it just came out. Like, if there's something that's just in the back of your head going, huh, I know the game is here. I'm excited, but I kind of dislike this thing. What, what is it that you dislike? I'm kind of, I'm interested. I want to hear what you, what you guys have to say. But uh, on that note, uh, take it easy. Good luck on your games. Have a good one. And I'll catch y'all later. Peace.